part five contains a series of chapters on the use um, of general purpose participation tools. It contains chapters on working with arbitrary groups, conducting interviews, working with the media, analyzing public comments, evaluating the public comments, and the use of consultants. In chapter 12, uh, we will talk about uh, working with advisory groups um, specifically. An advisory group is a group of individuals who bring unique knowledge and skills which augment the knowledge and skills of your own organization or department in order to more effectively guide the organization. Advisory committees need a sufficient range of expertise to accomplish the organization's um, mission. We will discuss what is the role of an advisory group. Number one, carry out a specific task or initiative. Number two, offer recommendations, not directives. Number three, do a strategy planning for your organization. And number four, um, help you with a community outreach. A properly composed uh, and structured advisory committee can be a tremendous complement to the effectiveness of the board of directors of your organization or your um, director, executive director, if you work um, for a city, so they can help you to carry out a specific initiative. Unlike the board of directors of organizations um, or other types of boards um, in the city, um, like the planning board or the planning um, commission, um, the advisory committee is able to focus narrowly in a specific program, for example, parks or biking, in order to advise or support your organization on that specific issue. Because advisory groups are, uh, uh, have a very specific task, they're often composed of professionals or people who have distinguished themselves on that particular topic and who can provide some level of expertise to guide the city or governing body in setting policies and give um, direction um, for the future. Unlike a board of directors of a nonprofit organization or an executive director of an organization, um, the advisory committee does not have any formal authority to govern the organization. So that means that the advisory committee cannot give you directions that you must follow. They're, what they do is actually advice. They make recommendations and will provide key information and materials um, to the director or the executive director or the board of your organization if you are in the for-profit world, the non-profit world, or um, in the city. Although advisory uh, groups do not give directive, they can help you with your strategic planning, such as determine the mission and purpose of a particular program, articulating the goals, means, and primary constituents to be served by the program, ensuring effective planning, monitoring and strengthening of programs and services ensuring adequate financial um, resources and enhancing the organization's um, public standing. The advisory committee might evaluate also the performance of a particular program. They might review, uh, monitor, or assess your specific um, program, or in this case, a plan. An advisory committee needs to therefore include influential community leaders that can be effective about spreading the word about your plan, your program, your department, or overall city services on this regard. The advisory committee plays an important public relations role that they can serve, for example, as an advocate for your organization to the community. They can gather input um, or they can serve as liaison with um, relevant constituencies. They can provide feedback to the organization from the community. They're usually very well connected and have great uh, networks. And they provide the technical expertise that you need. They provide an independent and um, unbiased, uh, hopefully sounding board 
for you. So it's like, again, give you advice of other perspectives to your organization. And they might assist staff in determining important community engagement activities. This is why at least at the city level, the majority of the advisors are chosen geographically, uh, meaning by community areas, or in the case of Salt Lake City, community councils um, or districts, uh, most likely. Um, because presumably they represent that community and um, they can also relate to uh, people living in that particular uh, district. James Crankton discusses why to use an advisory group. He offers a number of reasons. The, uh, they provide a cross sampling of different public views and concerns from your city. Members of the group have then a chance to also become informed very deeply about the issues that are um, being put for future decision making in your community. And they can advise you because they can understand these issues at depth, but also by listening to others in that conversation that have different perspectives than their own, they can come into hopefully a consensus and an agreement. They will listen um, to each other. And the longer they're in the board, the more they, they understand the perspectives of some other people. And they're also able to change their own um, perspectives. Or you can um, get um, good advice because um, it can really see from different points of view and come to a better um, conclusion and to a more complete understanding of how the community might see this particular issue or understand the situation. Also because of personal relationships are developed, the group um, can just like move those like relationships and influence the more um, extreme views, as I, as I mentioned, just kind of like come more to a, to a middle um, point. And advisory groups can serve as a communication link back to the constituents that um, these uh, advisors might represent. And they, again, might be able to come to a consensus if there's like some conflict in different groups in the, in the community. <clears throat> 